Mr. Chairman, thank you to the audience for being here. So, here I will present some consideration on the observation of acoustic emission, uh, some funny tests on titanium grade, uh, grade 5. So, uh, these are the aims of the work. We want to study what is the behavior of titanium grade 5 under fatigue. Then we want to apply the technique of acoustic emission to study what is the damage evolution during the test. As a consequence, we want to assess what is the capability of this technique to follow the different stages in the damage evolution process. And we want to see if uh, by monitoring what are the, say, the principal features of the acoustic emission uh, parameters, uh, if we are able to follow the crack uh, evolution. And finally, we want to compare some changes in this acoustic emission feature with some other changes that are uh, detectable with some other technique, for example, classically strain gauges or uh, thermography. Uh, let me, uh, before briefly, introduce what is the technique of uh, acoustic emissions. They are wave sounds that are, that are emitted by materials when a material is under stress. That can be mechanical, thermal, or thermomechanical stresses. In that case, uh, we observe a release of energy, and this release of energy that propagates inside the material as a sound wave can be detected, provided is a proper sensor is applied on the, on the surface. So, the analysis of acoustic emission can, be, can provide in a way which is completely non-destructive some information about the structural integrity of the material during the whole life. It is a technique that uh, has some point of strength, for example, the possibility to monitor, to monitor the the whole sample during the whole history of the sample. It is to say that, for example, compared with some other non-destructive technique, let's uh, think about, uh, for example, ultrasonic technique, we do not require scanning of the surface of the sample, so we can get monitoring of all, all the sample during the whole history of the sample. And some other, for example, uh, practical points of strength, for example, the access is necessary from only one side of the of the of the samples. We can get advantages of this point of strength if some caves are, are taken. We must take into account that the signals that are to be detected are very, very small. So the equipment which is nece necessary to uh, detect properly the acoustic emission must be well calibrated. It must consist of a sensor proper the amplifier, an amplifier, and then also the bandpass filter for further elaboration must be well selected in order to get rid of the noise uh, connected to the measurement just to the get focus on the true signal that must be detected. Um, uh, some words about the instrumentation, specifically what is the instrumentation we use in this uh, these experiments, uh, uh, the acquisition was made by two sensors, Pico sensor by Listras. They are very, very small. They are very easy to be placed on whatever samples. You can see these are the dimensions compared to one euro cent. Then we have um, two acquisition channel. We have a pre amplifier that is shown there in the, in the picture and uh, the game was set at 40 decibel and also we have set the threshold value of 45 decibel that means that only the signals which are uh, above this uh, threshold are there. This is a value that comes out from some preliminary calibration of, of the, the system I mean the specimen plus the, the machine which you need to, to get the, the fatigue test the specimen, I will give you in a few minutes some de more details on the specimen, is also equipped by two strain gauges with a nominal resistance having a base length of 3 mm, which are placed here in correspondence of the two slots that are uh, cut inside the, the samples. And also, um, the equipment was uh, also provided with a thermocamera with a temperature range 
between minus 20 to plus 60 that was based at that working distance and that given uh, re resolution. This is the specimen. This, is, uh, made, uh, this was cut by a plate of titanium grade 5. Uh, they were laser cut in order to not to produce residual stresses during the, the cut. And uh, also notches were cut by laser in order to introduce an area where there is a well known stress concentration. This uh, the stress concentration uh, factor as was uh, calculated by a simple uh, finite element uh, analysis model. These are some uh, characteristics of the material under study. Chemical composition, as, as we will see, more important the mechanical and thermal uh, characteristic that makes this material very, very interesting to be studied because, especially for its very good strength to density ratio and its good resistance to, corro to corrosion, it is a very appealing material for some very huge uh, industry parts such as aerospace, automotive. But also, in view of its very high biocompatibility, is a very required material in the biomedical industry. And there are also some other uh, sectors, such as, for example, the sports sector for the uh, building of uh, bicycle of uh, club or for golf, which are very really interested in this uh, material. So let's go to the experimental plant. We have tested eight samples. They were all tested under uniaxial sinusoidal load in an instant two columns of the driving machine. The loading ratio was minus one, the loading frequency was three hertz, and we tested three levels of loads and correspondingly three levels of stresses. Three samples were tested at 150 megapascal, three samples at plus minus 125 megapascal, and two samples are plus, plus minus 91.7 megapascal. The thermocamera acquisition frequency was set at 30 Hz. The acquisition frequency for acoustic emission system was set to 100 kHz, and the acquisition frequency for the string gains was set to 10 Hz. Uh, I want you to notice that the two sensors were placed symmetrically with respect to the position of the notch in the, in the samples. This allows not only to detect the signal, the acoustic emission signals generated inside the material, but also by computing what is the difference of the time of arrival on the sensor 1 and on the sensor 2, also to detect what is the linear position where the acoustic emission is generated inside, inside the sample. Of course, in order that this localization algorithm can properly work, so we need to determine by pre-calibration what is the speed wave uh, of, the, of the sound in that material and it was found to be that value, 5,500 uh, 5, meter per second. So here we have some experimental results. These are simply the, uh, the stress versus strain, uh, which is almost uh, because we are working, of course, in uh, uh, an in, uh, into the elastic region. Here we have the stress versus number of cycles, and as you can see, we observe that the two samples were not broken at the end of the test that was stopped to uh, five million of cycles. And uh, uh, also, if you look to the slope, this is the slope of the load versus strain curve as it was uh, uh, determined by the strain gauges. And as you can see, the slope stays almost constant during all the tests. And when we arrive at about 70% uh, of the total test of time, we start to observe a decreasing in this slope. And of course, this decreasing is observed before uh, from the strain gauges, which is nearest to the, to the location where the uh, crack initiated to propagate. Before introducing uh, acoustic emission results, just a brief reminder about nomenclature. When we have an acoustic emission signal and we have a threshold, then uh, we name it 
it's connected to this waveform, the number of pulses which overcome this threshold. So having this in mind, let's go to the results. As you can see, if we, if we here display this number of hits as a function of the normalized number of cycles, what we observe that we have three distinct stages. We have an initial stage when we have quite huge increments of the number of hits. Then for the most part of the test, the number of hits stay almost constant. Constant. It's, uh, it uh, increased very slowly. And then finally, when we are at about 80% of the total test, we observe again a very rapid increment of the number of hits. These three stages in the features of the evolution of the number of uh, hits in the test can be reconnected to the three stages of damage evolution inside, inside the sample. Here we have uh, phenomena which are connected to crack initiation. Here we have the stage of uh, stable crack propagation. And at the third stage can be connected to the stage of uh, unstable crack propagation. It's also interesting to compare what happens in terms of uh, density of its per volume near the notch and far from the notch. As you can see, if we express in terms of density, you said that most of the acoustic uh, activity uh, observed is observed near the notch. That is to say that the stress concentration area acts in order to uh, promote this kind of uh, dislocation movement, crack initiation and crack propagation. And this uh, may also observe the most part of the the same features can be also recovered if we display the, the data in terms of events as a function of time and as a function of the instant position. This is the center of the sample. So once more, most of the events occur in the center of the sample, that is to say, where the uh, stress concentration area is, uh, uh, is observed. And here again, we observe that we have a central region where the acoustic activity is very, very low. If we perform an analysis from uh, an amplitude point of view, we also observe that there is a distinction about the amplitude of the events observed near the notch and far from the notch. As you can see, far from the notch, the yeah, events have almost this amplitude at about uh, 50 decibels. Why? If you observe the events, which are near the notch, you observe now the occurrence of a second band. That is to say, most events near the notch and also events which have higher amplitude. And finally, just a comparison of what it is observed in terms of the derivative of the number of bits as a function of the, of the normalized number of cycles in broken sample and not broken sample. If the sample does not go to broken, this derivative is, is almost stable. It's used by some noise. While we was observed a peak, a huge peak in the, just before the, the broken of the sample, for, the, for all the cases where the sample were, were broken. And uh, here are some, uh, uh, just picture now from uh, Thermography, thermography confirmed that uh, all the crack propagation occurs linearly from one notches to, uh, to the other, just as uh, said in, uh, in acoustic emission. But uh, with thermography, thermography, we were not able to observe the very initial stage connected to the crack initiation that were they are very well observed with acoustic emission. So in conclusion, we have analyzed the crack propagation during the particular test. We have analyzed and described uh, the, the main feature, which is to say the number of bits and the amplitude connected to the number of, uh, of bits. And it was found that acoustic emission display features that can be reconnected to the damage evolution in the sample. Thank you very much for your attention.